Good morning, everyone. I am here with you today for the live stream. It's just Shell today. It's going to be the Shell show on our Joy Sharing Live. Um, we're going to be doing painty papers. I hope some people will be playing along with me today. I'd like to welcome the people that joined us early. We have Holly and um, Vicki and Laura and Becky, Sybil, uh, Peggy. That's all I can look at right now. Hopefully I can keep all this together, uh, working and demonstrating, looking at the chat, getting everything going. So um, yeah, we'll find out. So I've got a bunch of tools on my desk that I'm going to start with. And I just wanted to show you some of the real simple tools you can use to do painty papers. What we're doing is building stash. So I just want to make some interesting, marked up, colorful papers that I will use in the future. But we're going low tech today. We're going to use materials that everyone has, and we're going to use recycled papers that everyone has access to, and um, mark making tools that you can find around your house. And we're not going to be gel printing or anything, so it's kind of the uh, the way that you can do this if you don't really have stuff. So what I've got on my desk, I've got a brayer. That's kind of something that really everyone should have. You probably may not have it, but you can find one of these sponge brayers at the hardware store for an inexpensive price if you don't have the rubber one. Um, I have this, this paint spreader that you can buy from Art Basics, but if you don't have something like this, you can go to the dollar store and you can get the Betty Crocker, you know, cheap thing like this. It even has two ends. And um, I also have some other types of paint scrapers. Uh, these are the plastic palette knives. There's also metal palette knives. And very low tech. You might have a old credit card, gift card type situation that you can spread paint with. Um, of course, I have all kinds of sponges today. I've got squishy sponges and makeup sponges and artist sponges and all those kinds because they're all fun. And, you, you, you know, a paintbrush. <laughs> That's a good place to start. I've got lots of paintbrushes here, but uh, that was going to show you a fat one. I also have some fine liners that I'm going to be using for mark making as well as some other things like some stamps um, that have interesting shapes that I might use. I've got some other mark making tools like a, a wax uh, china marker. I've got some India ink, just stuff like that. So we're just gonna be playing with all that kind of stuff today and making some papers. Hello, Jen. Did I say Sybil? Did I say Marie? Hi, Kat. People are pouring in today. So um, I, what I'm going to start with, I like to have thin papers when I have painting papers because I tend to use them in collage. I'm a collage artist more than anything. And I generally have papers that I put under um, my camera and I work on them. And then they've got a bit of paper on, a bit of paint or, or spray. This one in case, this one has the stress spray on it. Um, they get a little bit dirty and I think that they look ugly on the camera when they're dirty. So I tend to change them out. But you know what? These are great for collage. And you can just tear it into some smaller pieces and then continue to work on it to make it more interesting. Whoops. <laughs> that wasn't quite the tear that I intended. If it does that, you can just throw it away. Because it's only just trash, right? It's just stuff that you would have thrown away anyway. But you might as well use it. So we're going to start with some pieces of this today. This is um, newsprint. It's uh, what newspapers would be printed on if they, you know, it would have black ink on it if it was a newspaper. The newspaper would also work. Sometimes they're a little bit fragile. But this is the same type of paper. Works great for collage. So the paint that I've chosen to work with today mostly is going to be Dilutions paints. But I did want to start out... Um, with some, oh, I've just got so much stuff on my desk. Hi, Ash. Hello, Jen. Hi, Deborah. I'm glad everyone's coming in. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. <laughs> um, I wanted to start out with some pastel pieces because I know that I'm going to be making some um, pastel y stuff soon because spring, Easter, you know, all that type of stuff. So I'm going to start out with some pastel colors to begin with. And I'm just going to pick random tools in which, oh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is this. Um, 
this is my large palette that I use when I'm working on larger projects. You guys don't usually see, you usually see this, this little plate. <laughs> you can tell it's a mainstays plate um, from what is that Target or Walmart? I'm not sure. But um, this bigger one I use when I'm working on larger projects. And I wanted to be able to brayer in my palette today if I wanted to brayer. So I decided to use a large flat one. And this one is made out of metal. It's uh, it's almost like a baking dish. I don't. I'm not really sure what it would be called, but it's kind of like that. Kind of like a baking dish. So this color is Naples yellow. I really like this as an additional neutral color. Um, when I'm working, you know, you got your white and you got your off white, which is buff titanium. But what if you wanted another neutral? So I use this this Naples yellow quite a bit for that. And I'm just going to apply some acrylic paint here. Huh, that made an interesting mark. See, there was a little piece of paper stuck. Well, it's still there. It made an interesting triangular shaped mark. So that's what this is all about. It's just building up color. If if you don't have these particular paints, that's fine. You can go buy the craft paints for this. They actually have a really nice matte finish, um, and they're inexpensive. But I have some uh, paints I want to use up, and that's not these. <laughs> um, these are just my regular ones, my student grade ones. But um, I have a lot of Dilutions paints. I just... Uh, have you ever sent me more Dilutions paints? So now I have some duplicate Dilution paints. And I also have, I just don't use them that often because on the gel plate for me, they get dry too quickly. And that's because I live in a very, very dry climate. They're designed to dry quickly if you're using them in your art journal pages. Um, that was what their whole point was. And so when you put them on a plate for in my climate, they dry almost instantly and they don't come up very well. So I want to use them for painting papers, but I wanted to start out with the pastel today. So we're going to set this aside and let it dry. And we will move on to some other pieces. So I'm just going to be working like in layers. So that one needs to dry. This one starts. Let's see if anyone else has joined us. Hi, Ela. Uh, Ela Peg's not here today. <laughs> She's got um, family medical problems. It's not her. It's it's other people in her family, and I'm going to be experiencing that soon as well. So as you can see, I have dilution paints. I've got paint dilution paints that um, are all still in their pots and haven't been used. So it's a good time to start using these. We're going to go with some really bright colors. Here's cherry pie, bubblegum pink, funky fuchsia, and squeezed orange. Maybe a little bit of that yellow. Where's that yellow? Yeah, this one, pure sunshine. <laughs> pure sunshine. I bet you some, some people are happy with that color today. We need pure sunshine. So when I'm using these, I generally take the lids off. But I don't leave them off very long because, whoa, <laughs> that one's gloppy. Because, um, like I said, in my area, ridiculously dry. So for this, I'm going to use a paint spreader. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to, whoa, spread some paint around, cover this paper so that we can make it more interesting later. Something that's fun to do with the dilutions in particular is you can do mark making in them with something pointy. <laughs> it has hair on it. See, isn't that fun? It's a good consistency for that. So that's always fun to do. And apparently my paint spreader thing is coming apart. Get it cleaned off and move to a different color. Who doesn't like oranges and yellows with pink? I certainly like it. And the dilution paints really blend together really well with each other. They were designed to do that. So sometimes you end up getting 
an interesting other color that you weren't expecting. So is anybody playing along with me today? Yes, Ela, the snow is gone. It's even gone off the mountains now. Um, I was going to point po uh, Lilla, post some interesting photos I had on Facebook, but I kind of forgot to do it. So I haven't gotten around to it yet. But um, I went hiking and I was up near the mountains. It's, it's very near my house. There's some mountains very near my house. And um, took some gorgeous photos of uh, the snow that had existed on the mountains. I wish this thing wasn't coming apart. I'm going to have to glue it back together. So pretty up there. Let's see what other kind of marks we can make. So this is just a standard palette knife. You can scrape around in your paint if you want to try to make it more interesting. Make some interesting marks with the tip of it. And all we're doing is just trying to, you know, make interesting paper that you might, you might theoretically use it in a whole piece, but more likely you're probably going to tear it up and use the part that you like when it's done. Let's see if anyone else has joined us. I see Kat. Oh, hi, Michelle. Michelle has joined us. I'm glad everyone's coming, even though um, Peg had posted that she wasn't going to be here um, because of medical appointments. I'm glad to see that other people still came. It's just me today. So I like to make sure the lids are on these. And sometimes I spray water into it before I close it. I'm not going to do it right now. But we'll set this one aside to dry for a while because it's very wet. <laughs> if I can find a place to put it. So another type of paper that I tend to use a lot is deli paper. And I also tend to put that on my, my desk underneath my projects when I'm on camera to keep the, the desk looking nice. Because it, it, it always freaks me out when I have like a big mess and I'm afraid that people aren't going to be able to tell the difference between what I'm doing <laughs> and what the background is. So I save these two. I don't ever throw a whole lot of stuff away because I just think it's, it's wasteful. So let's see what we got. We got some pretty blue colors and I think I got like a really dark blue. Where's that really dark one? It's called Midnight or something. After Midnight. After Midnight. Gonna let it all hang out. <laughs> so let's try these. We've got um, Fresh Lime. Calypso Teal and After Midnight, inspired by the song, I think. And let's try something else for spreading. What if I wanted to go like that? And just make it like some stripes or something. This is really intuitive and it's um, something that you can do without a lot of thought. You don't have to sit around fussing about, oh, is the mark that I made the right mark? You know what I'm saying? You can just play. And that's why I picked something like this today so that I could make sure that I was being able to pay attention to everything at once. That's how live streams are. You're kind of paying attention to everything at once. And I may not be the best at that. Ooh, that was fun. 
What kind of marks can we make in that? Need it thick there. Hmm. All right. Let's clean this off a little bit and move on to this real dark color. Let's add some of that in there. I'm doing my best not to contaminate the colors, but you know, that's it is what it is. <laughs> They'll get contaminated or they won't. So that one can probably uh, go dry for a little while. I'm waiting till the next thing. Oh, where can I put it? It's going to get crazy in here, people. Is this one dry now? Okay, this pastel one seems fairly dry, so let's bring it back in and put another layer on it. And maybe we'll try to keep things somewhat under control. <laughs> so generally when I'm uh, painting paper, I go with like a three color palette. Uh, three coordinating colors. Maybe they might be monochromatic, as in all the same color in different tones. Or maybe they might be complementary colors, ones that are across from each other on the color wheel. I don't have a color wheel to show you, but you know what I mean. Or sometimes I might use two colors that are completely opposite from each other. And then in that case, you need to kind of make, be careful about layering them on top of each other because of course you may end up with brown and you know how I feel about brown people. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it people. So let's, uh, oh, this is too bright. I want to stick with pastels. So let's bring in some yellow. I mean, some, not some yellow, some white into my palette. And then I can blend some of these other colors that I had in with that. And let's try to go with this. Uh, let's try to go with something that matches this. Ooh, that's nice. I don't even have to blend that. That looks really good on top of that. The pastel is kind of washed out. This is pink. I don't know if you guys can see that this is pink on the video. I kind of think you can't. Michelle, deli paper is the type of paper that they wrap fish sticks or sandwiches in at the deli and it is waxed on one side but um, generally waxed on one side but it that doesn't make it completely waterproof so let's start doing some mark making over the top of this one with some other colors so this is just the side of a card and you can make some interesting marks with just the side of a card, just by kind of scratching with it, just in short strokes and crisscrossing, making maybe a crosshatch uh, pattern. And again, I might just end up using just this, or just, you know, I you don't necessarily have to use the entire paper when you, Go to do whatever art you're going to do with it, whether it's collage, whether it's putting it in your art journal. Um, these are great for art journaling. I'm, I'm going to be short in time in the near future because there's a major medical crisis in my family and I'm not going to have a lot of time. So I was thinking having things like uh, these type of papers and like maybe we were, Peg and I were talking about uh, making a collage collection book. Um, like the one that Dina Wakely has, having something like that in your your room in your art room where you can just grab and you can do your creativity, get rid of some of the stress that you're having, and get make something pretty and then be done in a few minutes, you know, 15 minutes or 20 minutes, I think is something that's going to be very beneficial for me. So that's one of the reasons that I'm building my stash today with these type of papers because I know that I'm gonna I'm gonna need this kind of stuff soon, very soon, to just 
get some stuff done and you know make something interesting make something pretty and then let's see i'm looking for bubble gum pink here's some bubble gum pink so i'm going to mix the bubble gum uh, with some white over here on my palette i know you guys can't see my palette but i want to make a more lighter color that's more pink than the one in the background that's still maybe too bright but is interesting enough and we can bring in some other mark making tools um of course the number one favorite of everyone who and everyone has this probably because you probably got a package that has this in it is the good old bubble wrap ah, this does not want to cut <laughs> does not want to cut let's see has anyone else joined us cat is still pegging so if you have something like this um this is a great mark making tool and you can just take your paint and just roll it on there or sponge it on there or use a brush and this makes fantastic marks fantastic you can you know you can't get better than that and that's just plain old packaging that everyone has Very fun, very fun. I like using this. I like using this on the gel plate too, but you don't have to. You can just use it as a sponge, I mean, as a stamp. This is just a sponge type of a thing that I bought at, um, I think, Walmart. Just a little, I guess they call it a sponge dauber. As long as we're going with circles, I have a whole, bas whole basket. <laughs> this is a small basket, but I have a bigger basket that you know, I'll get out in a minute. <laughs> this one has every kind of mark making thing you could possibly imagine, just all in there. This one is called Lemon Zest. Yum. I love lemon. And let's pick out some things like pill bottle. Sure, everybody has pill bottles. You can make marks with that. You don't even have to clean them, that's the nice thing. Here's a little bit bigger one. This is a lid from something, um, like a tube lid. I don't know what it came from actually, but it's fun to have more than one kind of circle, one, more than one size. And then here's a really small one that was probably um, protecting a brush, a paintbrush at some point. That's looking kind of interesting. I think maybe it needs some more white. I don't know. This is an interesting thing. This is, um, uh, uh, What's it called? Plastic canvas. Plastic canvas. It makes interesting marks too. Let's get some real pure white going here. Get some of that on there. Get it loaded up. And you just press it down like a stamp. getting yellow on the back because that yellow paint isn't dry. <laughs> I 
and I'm getting very painty. One thing that will happen in this process is that you will get covered with paint. And then if you if you think things are a little bit too bright in places, because remember this one was supposed to be pastel, right? You can come back in with your brayer again that you used to originally put on the paint, and you can calm it down with a little bit of white or the other colors that you started with. So if we go back with some of this uh, yellow, this Naples, Naples yellow can calm it back down a little bit. In places, where you went a little bit crazy, maybe we can bring back in some of this um, light rose. White rose is a very, very, very pale pink. Pale, pale pink. My chair is really squeaky. I hope you guys can't hear that. I never noticed it before. So I wonder if it's been doing that for a while. And then this one is the um, sky blue light. These are Amsterdam, which is Liquitex basics, basically, only in the other country. It's the same paint. It's like a student grade uh, acrylic, which I really like on my gel plate. For me, for my climate, that's perfect, but you just never know. Okay, so this one, we're gonna let it dry a little bit. So it gets a little bit wet, but you can see it's starting to build up some interesting pattern and color and shape. And let's, uh, these other ones are still way too wet. Whoa, it's getting all over me. A tap of the paint. Let's get another one and give it give another start here. Maybe in uh, honor of Peg, since she couldn't join us today, we'll use these colors. <laughs> Which to me are the epitome of evil. No, okay, they're not. They're just colors. <laughs> oh, what a mess. I got a mess everywhere here. So we've got melted chocolate, ground coffee. Hi, Fia. Let's see who else joined us. Hi, Caged Fish. I, I wish I could remember um, people's names when their name isn't their name. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Ooh, that really does look like melted chocolate. Don't you just want to eat that? Oh my gosh, it's milk chocolate ganache. <laughs> that one is uh, getting a very gloppy. We better put some water in there. Let that soak in a little bit. This one is ground coffee. So now we have coffee and chocolate. Can't get better than that. This one is uh, slate gray. And then we'll bring in a little bit of, oh my gosh, this is almost empty. Uh, unbleached titanium would go well with this. Uh, if I can get any out of the tube. Oh, a little bit. That's good. All right, what should we use? Should we come in with the Betty Crocker? Betty Crocker is coming through. <laughs> Just trying to make a light coating of colors here. Oh, here goes the chocolate. Oh my gosh. How yummy. It really does look like chocolate. I'm telling you people. I don't know if you can see it on the video. That is milk chocolate right there. I can, oh man, that might not work. This thing might be completely dry. Oh darn. I think this one is done for. Well, I'm getting a little bit, but it's pretty darn dry. Yeah, I think my coffee color dilutions has kicked the bucket. That's sad. 
So let's see if we can find something equivalent in these other paints. There we go. How about uh, burnt umber? Burnt umber is a similar, similar color. Even that looks gloppy. You can see that. <laughs> you can see that I don't use brown very often, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's some gloppy paint right there. But it does give us a little bit of different color there to give us a good start with our neutral palette here. Or maybe it's a fall palette. I don't know. We also can throw in some of this gray, which is a great shading gray color. It's uh, an interesting color as well. Come back in with the off white again and get some of the light colors back in. So that'll be a good one to start some stuff on in a bit. Need to set it aside. See if this one can even see see how wet it still is. I'm kind of surprised that it hasn't calmed down yet. These are supposed to be dry fast ones. But I can fix that. Just spread it out a little bit and it'll dry faster. I might have just made it too thick. And I want to do heat tools today, people. No heat tools. Don't have time for that nonsense. Dry, dry. Well, I guess we'll just put some more layers on it. <laughs> Why not? So one of the best tools in your arsenal, of course, is your fingers. You were given those for a reason. They make great tools. You can make, you can just, you know, rub in paint with them. You want to lighten up a few spots. Or you can make marks with them. They're very handy, those little fingers. And since this is still wet, I'm getting a little bit of blend, which is interesting to me. Try to get just the tip of my finger. There we go. Just get your hands in it. Have some fun. So I guess I asked if anybody was playing around with me, but I don't think I saw any answers. Kat says she loves the smell of acrylic paint. Sometimes, um, it depends on the paint brand for me. I don't like the smell of some of the less expensive paints. They smell very chemically icky to me, but some smell really good, so it just depends. So that's kind of fun. Let's uh, set that aside to dry some more because it's still just way too wet to do anything else. I wish that this stuff would speed up and dry.
Same thing with this one. This one is not dry either. Spread out some of those ridges. This one's going to need a lot of lightening up. Lightening up. I think it's too intense. <laughs> Look at what's happening with, to the sponge brayer. It's getting lines on it. This one is pretty, pretty limey. that one in there for a while. Let's see, what else kind of tools do we have to play with today? We have lots of things. How about some of these guys? These are um, sequin waste, and here's some wall tape, that type of stuff. Here's some pan liner, or I mean shelf liner. Makes interesting marks. What can we do with any of these? How about we come in with some metallic paint? This is PBO Dyna Studio Acrylic, which is an iridescent paint. And I think that that would be kind of fun. Ooh. I said I was going to use dilutions today, and then I go and get everything else out. <laughs> This is how it happens. These make great stencils, and, and they're very uh, cheap and inexpensive. You might even already have it. So but you can't go wrong with a little metallic, right? Hi, Patricia. Welcome. Making painty paper today. Running out of paint. So this one has more circles on it, and we can use some. What should we use? How about some silver? Same thing, PBO Studio Acrylic. And a sponge. Yeah, that's fun. I tend to do these things in clusters. All around the paper. So you might wonder what I could use these papers for. And the most likely use is going to be in my journal as collage. But also, I can use um, them for tags and, you know, things like that. Or they can just be cut and made car card backgrounds. And then you can just um, go ahead and throw a thank you or something over the top. And you will have a quick and easy card. I, I use a lot of thank you cards. So that's always something that I need. And I can just cut this into four pieces, mount it on a piece of white card, and then put thank you on it with a stamp or something. And there you have it. I've got a quick and easy thank you card, which is just something I'm constantly needing. So they're very useful. And it's kind of like a start. It's a it's like a page jump off where you can start your page by just putting this in the background or start your project that way. This is like uh, some type of, I think it's maybe um, for wall, for putting drywall up. Had it for a long time and it's got some stuff stuck to it. It's got paper stuck to it because it was sticky on one side, but it makes little squares. We probably have some other square makers, so let's get out some more square makers since this seems to be a way to go here. That'll be fun. Messy, messy, messy. Let's see what I've got in the way of square making. Okay, I've got, I know down in here I've got some little 
They're just like foam pieces that used to be something inside of a um, uh, packaging. You know, like say you get an electronic and it needs to be it needs to be in there so that it doesn't move around these are the type of things that i have this is um this makes interesting rectangles and it's just had buttons or something in it it's just packaging packaging stuff and this one also makes rectangles let's see what we got here in the ways of squares and rectangles these just kind of use them like stamps okay it slipped a little bit but you can make like a checker a checker grid with it and come back in and highlight some of that stuff with uh, some other other pins and things that we'll be using when these get dry providing they get dry today <laughs> But this is a fun mark. Just little kind of squares. You got to get it in the, the paint to get it good and square making there. But it's fun. Um, this one, this is that uh, shelf liner, shelf liner stuff. But if you use it as a stamp, on this side, uh, let's see what color shall I use? How about some metallic? How about some more metallic? We got this one. This one is green blue iridescent. Make sure I got some of my stuff. <laughs> got stuff everywhere. It's going crazy around here. You can take your brayer and just uh, ink this thing up. And then it makes little tiny rectangles too, sort of. See? So it's a fun one. And depending on what color you use, it can show up more or less. Obviously, this is going to blend into the background quite a bit. But it just adds more interesting texture and pattern over the top of some of this other stuff. Very fun, just looking at the chat to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm glad everyone's here. Thank you so much for joining me on my, my maiden voyage of being by myself <laughs> in the live stream today. I wasn't that nervous, but it's just kind of like, oh, there's not a second pair of eyes that can watch. See, I've even got some interesting pattern on my brayer. So if I was to take a piece of white paper like this and brayer that off, I get a pattern as well. So that's always fun too. So let's see. What else shall I do to this one? Oh, I didn't. I didn't show you guys this one. So this this was the one that had it probably had sequins maybe or beads or something, and then it was stuck. You know, it's like a little package ish thing, packagey thing. So I think I want to bring out some more of this um, very very bright, crazy green color. So let me see if I can find that one again. This one is fresh lime, fresh lime. And I'm just gonna use a regular old sponge to apply this to this because I don't wanna put it on my palette and the, the um, my brayer doesn't fit inside there. Does that make sense? How fun is that? Thank you, everyone. They say I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. I don't want to disappoint anyone. So that is really fun. That, you know, a little bit of packaging can go a long way, people. Especially nowadays with a lot of the companies using 
interesting uh, art in their packaging. You can just tear it off and um, use it, reuse it. So this piece is looking kind of awesome. We need to set it aside to dry so that I can come in with some more smaller mark making stuff. So um, yeah, please dry. Hopefully it'll dry in time. Let's see how much time do we got. We've used 45 minutes, so we've got 45 more minutes. So pray that this one is going to dry so we can play with it some more. Let's bring this guy back. He's looking pretty crazy. What do we want to do with this? Throw some more sponges in the water. Hmm, what other kind of mark making stuff do we have? We didn't even go through all the circles and look up into that other bucket. This bucket has toys galore. We have some uh, different types. Ooh, teardrops. Is that kind of got ran over by my chair? Hopefully it'll still work. This one's an interesting shape. These are made out of um, uh, styrofoam. Styrofoam sheets. Uh, or we could go with flowers. Because I've got this other one. Flowers, maybe. These are fun foam shapes. This is just all stuff that I have. This makes an interesting pattern. Um, oh, there's one that's a flower, though. Well, I think we're. I think the universe is telling us flowers, people. What do you think? Is that what it's saying? <laughs> that was an interesting one. Um, what do I have in the bottom here? All kinds of crazy stuff in here, people. That one's made out of rope. That's probably whoa. It's probably enough for now. Let's uh, let's come back in with the super dark color that I used. Uh, what was it? Let's find out. Hmm. Was it this one? Funky fuchsia, maybe. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Let's start with that. And let's use that other piece of sequin. Uh, here, this one. It's another piece of sequin waste. Looks like flowers, right? Looks like flower shapes. Make sure I get enough paint on there. This one looks like it's going to need some water to calm it down, too. I just leave that water in there and let it, let it do its thing. Well, that's fun. I need to think a little bit more, put it over the orangey areas. This is still very sticky. <laughs> it's a uh, really um, sticking to my fingers and sticking to everything. I don't like those perfectly rounded shapes that I ended up with. That wasn't my intention. Silly. Let's connect some of them and make them more interesting. Okay, that's some of that fuchsia color. Let's see what people are saying. Kat says she used some of some bottoms of the of some of her dishes for mark making. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Come back here, you silly sponge. Where did you go? <laughs> Sponges are flying. Things are happening. I don't know. It's crazy around here. Um, we got still got this orangey color. Let's try this one. See what we can get with some of these other things. Like here's a um Little flowers on. Uh, do I want to do it this way? I guess so. This is a homemade stamp. Homemade stamp with um, punched out fun foam shapes on some styrofoam sheet, which 
here in the United States, you can get the styrofoam when you buy your meat. It comes with uh, styrofoam bottoms that keeps uh, the juices of the meat, I guess, <laughs> from, you know, getting all over the place. So that's a common thing. I found out from people on my channel that that is not the way that meat comes, like in the UK and stuff. I don't have the free styrofoam, but I'm sure it's still available in some form. It's just maybe not with your meat like it is here. This is a fun one. Makes little flowery shapes. Oh, Kat's talking about veggies now. Yes, I love to do vegetable prints. I did that in a video uh, using the gel plate and veggies. So fun. Vegetables and fruit. Really fun. Definitely recommend that. Okay, what else did I grab here? I've always liked this one. It kind of looks like a flower. It's 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 more looks like an orange, but um, let's get some. Uh, what color should we go with? How about this crazy, crazy fluorescent? That'll work. I don't know how trans um, transparent it is though. I haven't used that that often. But let's find out if it's opaque or transparent. We will know now. Oh, it's very transparent. Too bad. Well, we'll just put some on with our brayer then. So we can get a thicker layer of it. Because it is bright. I like it. Can't go wrong with that. So then let's do our little round thing with, um, with, hmm, maybe just white. Yeah. Or, <laughs> okay. I have the answer. It's always the answer. Anybody that watches my channel will know what my answer is. When all else fails, we use copper. Copper. Thank you for that, Marie. Yes. I always appreciate a thumbs up. Helps the channel. Copper is the answer to everything. I love it. <laughs> it's not showing up quite as much as you would expect, but it's beautiful anyway. Love it. So you can see how this process goes. I hope that if you guys are not playing along today that you will... Make some painty papers for your own future use um, because I think that they're going to be really beneficial and probably maybe sometime in the near future I will make a video of what I use some of this for just so that you guys go from the start to the finish, you know. You really understand what I'm talking about when I say building your stash and having things on hand to use later when you don't have a lot of time. I really want to try this one, but I have a feeling it's going to be it's going to be too flattened out because you can see right there where I ran over it with my rolly chair. <laughs> I could use this one. This is an interesting one too. Let's try this one. It's kind of a, kind of a teardrop shape as well. And let's go super light. Let's go with that light pink again, which is almost white, but not quite. Ha, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. <laughs> you should see my water 
bucket. It's like, it's like, I can't show it to you, but it's, it's smearing colors because I throw something in there and then it's like, here's pink and here's purple. It's like, it's really pretty. <laughs> Too bad I can't preserve that. I guess I could dip some paper in it and see if I could pick it up. Probably not though. So this one is kind of fun because you can make sort of a, well, would you come off the paper? Sort of a um, undulating pattern with it. Let's see if I can get better inking going on there. It's trying to get away from me. You can like line it up so that it can come down in um, a pattern. I hope I'm making sense. Probably not. I want to put it somewhere where it'll really show. Have other copper lovers in the audience. <laughs> They're all piping up. <laughs> copper. When all else fails, use copper. This is a fun, fun one. I should make some more like this. You can make a series of uh, little funny stamps like this in this shape that you could alternate with. And I think this one is looking pretty much like it's time to dry. What do you guys think? Probably a little bit. Well, I did want to try this one, though. I'm going to try this one. I don't know. It's... it's um, uh, one of those embossing folders and it just has an interesting pattern. I wanted to try and see if I could transfer it. I know that it works on the gel plate, but I'm not so certain that it'll work in just paint because I might press too hard on it and make it um, go a little bit crazy. I'm not sure. I guess we'll go with the light pink again just to see if we can get the pattern to transfer. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a um, a card to apply it and see if I can get the paint on that way so that I can get a good image here. Let's try right here. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, it transfers. See, we got some of the loops um, from the shape. I don't want to get too much paint on there. So yeah, you guys, if you have all those embossing folders that you just had to have and now hardly anybody uses them anymore, <laughs> now you know what you can use them for. Thank you, Sybil. Sorry you have to go to work. <laughs> but have fun at work. Okay, so this one is ready to sit aside to um, dry a little bit more because it's uh, super wet, soggy even. So let's come back to this pastel guy. What do we want to do with this pastel guy? Okay, it's time to move on to some other mark making tools like uh, maybe some distressed crayons. Or some, let's see, we'll go with the pastel Posca pins and get some crazy stuff going on there. Uh, what do we got? Let's go with some pink. So it's kind of fun to just go along with these type of tools and just maybe color around some of the shapes. Um, just add a little bit of mark making that way. And this, of course, is blendable because it's a very soft type of a water-soluble pastel. You can also use any of the other ones that you have. You know, I've got a ton of different types of, of things like Neo Color 2. And, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. I'm a little bit addicted to this type of thing. Then you can come in with, uh, well, I'm out of baby wipes, if you can believe that. Completely out. So... I'll use this uh, piece of shop towel and I'll dip it in a little bit of water, squeeze it out so that it's just barely wet. And then I can blend this stuff 
very easily. This is super blendable. This um, Distress Crayon is really intended to be highly water reactive as opposed to some of the other ones which have a little bit more of a waxy base. So, you can do that. That adds a little bit of something, something, something. Of course, like I said, same thing with these. These are my favorites. The Neo Color 2 Water Soluble Pastel. And I can come in with that. Same way, just kind of color it around and blend. If you don't have any water soluble pastels at all, I would suggest this one because I think it's the most versatile one. Um, it's a very high quality product. Not saying that the distress isn't, but um, you know, it's my preference. So if you care about what I think, <laughs> then you might want to try the, the Neo Color 2 as your first one. I have so many different ones, but it's just kind of how I roll. This is a pretty color. It's, um, I think periwinkle. Sky blue it's called, but I would call it periwinkle. It's kind of a blue purple. Blue purple. Then I'll say we can use some of this one, which is very similar to this background color, and just make some dashes, you know, just some random dashes. There's nothing wrong with dashes. Oh, Jen had to go too. Sorry, Jen. Bye. I don't know. She's probably already gone by the time I noticed it. It's hard to keep up with the chat and... Uh, you know, my eyes are down, and then I have to lift my eyes up <laughs> to look at the chat. <laughs> but yeah, dashes. Dashes are fun. They can go up and down, or they can go sideways. But they're very fun little mark, probably in my top top five marks. Because you can make do them with your fingers, too. And then also another one that I like to do. Hmm, what do I want? Something needs to be right here. I can come in with a light pink type of a color. Make some of those same dash marks. With light pink. Just for fun here and there. Also, that kind of mimics the um, the cross hatching I did with the card in the background. So this is looking this is looking interesting. I think it's looking very interesting. Also, another option are Posca pins. Posca pins are pretty awesome too. But you want to make sure that your thing is super dry before you start with Posca pins, because you will be sad. If you ruin your Posca pin. <laughs> One thing I really like to do with Posca pins is just splatter. I think splattering is fun. And they just come out like that. This is an acrylic, so it just comes out of the end for some reason. I don't know why. But it's fun. can set that guy aside to dry. I don't know if I'm done or not. We'll have to figure it out later. But it's starting to really look like something. And I could just see a section of this used on a project. So how are we doing with our brown? I don't know. Is it dry? Not really. Bye, Arlene. Hi, Arlene. Bye, Arlene. I don't think I ever said hi to Arlene. <laughs> that may have been the first thing she said in the chat. Sometimes people just don't just um, hang out and don't talk, which is absolutely fine. You do not have to talk if you don't feel comfortable. 
All right. Brown. Lots of brown. <laughs> dessert amount of brown. Ugh. But I think we're going to get go even browner. This this paint really needs to go bye bye. It's gooky. That's a technical term. Gooky. All right. What should we try? Let's see. We come back in with our. I, I was really kind of loving this oval one. Um, this oval sequin waste I think is really cool. I believe I received that in Happy Mail. So somebody got lucky and found that somewhere. I don't know where. But I think it is super cool. I like the shape. Michelle says she just bought some Finnebar liquid paints. I will be interested to see those. All the new stuff is coming out now. Um, things are starting to be available. And the first thing I want to buy of all the things coming out is that um, the, the clay that dries, uh, what are they calling it? Fast dry clay, instant dry clay. Uh, it's a clay that you use your heat tool with, and then it just um, it has a, a process, and it just you see that you see it changing as it's heating and pro and then the chemical process is going across and just dries it like hard, and it, and it doesn't dry out on its own. You have to use that heat tool to dry it. Just looks super interesting, and I really want to try some of that. That's that's my on my wish list. This does remind me of bark. It's bark. Bark bark. I wanna just kind of fill in right there. Okay. What other kind of tools can we use on this one? Let's see. How about this stamp? That's like an amoeba. <laughs> Funny amoeba stamp. Which color shall we use? Let's go with um, uh, copper. Why wouldn't you? Right? I don't know. I don't know about my chair. I feel like you can hear it. <laughs> Yeah, that clay does really sound interesting. And I've, I've watched it being demoed and it was like this science guy, like he looks like a science guy, right? He's like some type of professor or something that invented it. And then um, Rangers are bringing it out. Um, the science guy was at CHA Creativation talking about it and it had his own booth, but they also had it over at the Ranger booth because they're going to be selling it. And I just am like pretty amazed at how useful that would be because it won't dry out on your table. It doesn't dry out on its own. So you can even leave the lid off the, off the container. But then it will dry out eventually when you put the heat on it. You can build a dry part of it. You can build more wet on top of it and heat it and continue to build like a structure with it. It's just it's it just dries hard. Like and that's some type of a two-part polymer that's is used with heat 
And I just thought it was super awesome sounding. <laughs> so useful. Because I like, you know, I use air dry clays. Those dry out in my studio before I use it up. I use, um, oops, just dropped that. If I use polymer clay, then I have to cook it and it's got chemical processes and I don't really enjoy that. So I'm not a big fan of polymer clay, but this one is just, I don't know. The only thing I'm worried about is that it might be stinky. I don't like things that smell stinky. But I guess we'll see when I buy some of it. I dropped my um, off-white right on the floor. I don't want to reach down there and get it. If there's any paint in this. Not much. Very goopy paint. Ew. So, I think... We're gonna run out of time before I ever finish one of these completely. <laughs> so I should probably move back to the one that's the driest, whichever one that might be. Because I wanna put some pen marks um, or something, maybe some something on there. So this is just a multi-layer process. You, you work on more than one at a time so that you can dry in between. So. Yeah, I better set this one aside and work on one that might be sort of dry. Are any of them at all dry? Not big. This one's probably the most dry. So, oh, I also had some fun stamps, which I thought would be fun to, this is the one right here is my favorite. I bought this stamp set from Gina B. Aaron's Etsy shop for that stamp. <laughs> it's real. I mean, I like all of them, but that's the one I really wanted. And I just thought that was super cool. It's just scribbly writing, but I don't know. My scribbly writing doesn't look like that. Not at all. Isn't that cool? You just put it in a spot somewhere. You can line them up together with each other. Just really like that. My scribbly writing just looks like scribbly writing. Other people's scribbly writing looks like cool stuff. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> So, you know, I'll probably just take like a section of this and I'll just tear it and I'll be like, oh, well, look at that. I think I'll collage that onto a tag right now. Why not? It's not really dry. Slap some something on there. Want it to be kind of going off the page there. Huh. That was definitely not dry. <laughs> Dang it. Kind of grayed it out. ink was not dry. Not at all. It's not stuck down very well either, but you get the idea. Come on, stick it down. 
know. Silly thing. Don't have time to dry you. Don't be silly. I think it's because my my collage brush was very wet. Let's see if I can do a little bit better. I think I have way too much water on my collage brush. There we go. That's much better. <laughs> Actually, gonna stick maybe. <laughs> ah. I did order up some new um, Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. So then, if I had that, then. It actually worked in my favor to have that a little bit not um, that ink not quite dry because it kind of calmed it down a little bit. Then I could come back in with some other paint, isolate some of the areas with my fingers, you know, like you do. Maybe you calm things down a little bit in places. Add a little bit more of that blue back in. This is very uh, pastel looking. Maybe just for kicks, I'm gonna get some of this. <laughs> just give it a few very blended but bright pops of pink. And yes, I said the P word. I know it. <laughs> because this really is kind of a P word sort of a uh, paint. <laughs> How are we doing on time? All right. Do I dare dry this? Ugh. I might want to just um, use another one of these stamps, maybe. <laughs> just got my stamp bag all dippy, but that gave me an idea. That thing is not dry. And it will make an interesting pattern if you just press it down. Okay, maybe I got most of it off onto my stamp packaging sadly <laughs> everything just gets to be a disaster here in my studio it just goes crazy what other stamp do I want from here how about this one But you can see how I can build something very quickly using this um, paper that I've made. Oops. I just want to get the ink off of that a little bit. So I can set them aside. And then, um, what do I want to do? I really am kind of liking that pink. I kind of want more of it. Whoa. Pink got out of control there for a second. <laughs> Oh, this fails. Use your fingers. It's pretty awesome. So recently in um, in that uh, stencil club that I'm in, they decided to do something that was absolutely brilliant. 
is to do this uh, tissue paper stamped image exchange swap where you put some images that you like on tissue paper with a permanent ink and then you send them to someone else and you get some in return. And we did this in our dairy sharing last year, but um, not everyone followed through. Um, so we were kind of disappointed last year when we did it. But I tell you what, these people followed through and I got some really interesting um, papers. I mean, not papers, but stamped images. And I think that we could dry this and then put one of them on there. So now, of course, they're just living in my room and I have all these options of things I can use. And I think that it's pretty fun. Let's see what I got. Oh, I'm, I'm like two hands. <laughs> oh, look at that butterfly. That one might be cool, but it's kind of big for a tag, but. Hmm. What do I want? Maybe some of these scribbly flowers. Maybe this building. I don't know what I want. There's so many to choose from. There's so many. I used this one the other day on my tag. <coughs> I don't know. I don't know what I want. These strange little people. Oh. I think I found what I want. I think I'm just going to go with flowers because it's spring. Now, of course, I've got stuff everywhere again. That's pretty dry. Pretty dry. Oh, but I love this owl. That would be cool on there. Let's do the owl. Look at that. <coughs> so these so these are just archival ink that um, someone has stamped on there. And I can just take a water brush and just go around it like this and get the, a little bit outside of the lines. And then it will just come right out. Got eight minutes, <laughs> eight minutes to finish this. <laughs> I don't want that little blunk on there. Oh, but that's cute, cute, cute. And I'll use some uh, Liquitex matte gel medium or another choice, good choice would be decoupage, um, decoupage napkin glue from Deco Arts, but I don't have it out right now, so. I'm going to use this one instead. Oh, I didn't see a squirrel. I would have liked a squirrel. I didn't even see that. There's so many choices on those pages. Owl. Just make sure that it's not um, got much of a wrinkle going on. I think I'll just fold this over to the back so I don't have to trim it. Just let it uh, glue down to the back side. Okay, I did a terrible job of that, but my intentions were good. <laughs> All I did was manage to make it wrinkle. <laughs> I think I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tear at the bottom because I like that look. Probably going to mount this on a different piece of paper because I like to do that too. I need a punch here. Get the hole punched out. I always have the chads left in here and then I can't see through the hole because <laughs> everything I punch is sticky. That's why. I 
maybe sponge the edges a little bit add a little bit of color to my guy i need this to dry dry get out some colors oh everything is such a mess it's a mess everywhere you just can't stop it how about let's give him um blue eyes blue eyes for this owl Blend that with a little bit of a water brush. No, oh, I got a little bit too much. Took a little bit too much away on that side. I just wanted to uh, make the black stand out. Then, um, let's see what else. He probably needs a body color, which is probably going to be mm, yellow, maybe. Maybe some orangish sort of a tone of yellow. Yeah, that'll work. A little bit of that right there. A little bit on his ears. And then that can blend down to a pink so that he's got a little bit of pink cheeks. A little bit of interest there, and we'll give him a pink tail too. Never go with one color if you can have more than one, right? <laughs> the more colors, the better. And some orange, orangey, orangey, orange on his beak. If I can get it. I don't know. It doesn't make much of a difference. Maybe some more of that pink up here by the top of his head. Or her, I guess. It's a pink and orange owl. It's probably going to be a her. And then, of course, we need a little bit of green leaves. Which I went with a blue-green because there's so much blue in the background. That's looking pretty good. And then... Uh, what do I want to do for shadowing? Hmm. Black back if I can. Talking to myself, people. <laughs> you know how it is. When you talk to yourself. I didn't even get to any of my um, some of my other stuff. Wow, this went by fast. Fast, fast. Because I was gonna use some India ink marking, and I was gonna use some. Other stuff. I was going to use my fine liners. I was going to. Wow. Yeah, I can't believe how fast this went. Just extend this out a little bit. That's got a very fine tip on it. But I like the scratchiness of it. Makes it look scratchy, scratchy. It's kind of cool. And I probably could have went with a finer line here. So this is India ink, um, and uh, 
uh, you know, like a quill pin. It's kind of fun. I think I'm just going to go with actual lines. This this owl doesn't have lines around it, but in order for it to stand out from the background, I just kind of think it should. So I'm going to give it some lines, some very scratchy, sketchy lines with India ink. Because I can, right? I can do whatever I want. It's my art. Have a little, like thing like that. Getting a little bit of um, weird uh, lifting of the paper because it's still kind of wet, and this pen nib is very pointy, and so it's giving me a little bit of a weird scratchiness on here. At least I think it's weird. Well, that went a little bit wonky. <laughs> but hey, they're my personal marks. <laughs> if it's a wonky circle, it's a wonky circle. Get the idea. Get a little bit of motion going on there. A little bit more multiple marks. All right. So, you guys get the idea. Mark making. And um, we'll probably need a little white catch light. Oh, man. We're past time. I gotta go. But we do need catch lights just a little bit. And probably a little bit more white highlights. And I'm gonna back this with some other color of cardstock, maybe sponge a little bit, like you do around the edges. And you guys get the absolute idea of what we're talking about, painting papers. And here's almost a completed deck. So let's see what we did today. We've got some that still are in progress. This one's still in progress. This one obviously still is in progress, still wet. <laughs> here's the crazy pink one that's still wet. And... The brown barky one that's still wet that um, will be worked on eventually. I will finish these up and here's a little tag. So I hope you guys had fun. Remember to um, do the th thumbs up thing. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and all that stuff. If you worked along today, I saw Laura said that she was going to post the ones that she did today um, in Art Joy of Sharing. If you haven't joined Art Joy of Sharing, you can uh, go over there to the Facebook group and ask to join and you will need to answer the questions. Just make sure you answer the questions. And what else do I have to say? Yeah, that's it. And thanks everyone for coming. I hope that I welcomed everyone and that I talked as much to you as I could. <laughs> Bye guys.